Okay, quick video on another front end for a Raspberry Pi. A couple of my recent videos have shown a track mode with Raspberry Pi and specifically with RetroPie. Again, this is a RetroPie build with a different front end called, as it says at the top there, Mess Station. This is um, comparatively new, but it works really well on a variety of platforms already. And um, this particular video is going to show how it works with RetroPie. Now, it, like I say, it is quite new, so there's quite a bit, I think, more development um, needed on specifically a Raspberry Pi environment or certainly on a RetroPi environment. Because there are a few things that I've found that need quite a bit of tweaking to work. But this is on um, a Raspberry Pi 3 and standard RetroPi. Um, this is 3.8.1 I'm running it on. And you can find on the wiki for MessStation installation or compiling instructions and it's fairly easy to install and run but then separately obviously you've got some configuration and um, the the instructions probably need a bit of tweaking to make it easier but then it's on a wiki so anyone can contribute to do that so I imagine they'll improve soon anyway but back to mess station the front end and this is just like emulation station as a front end or a track mode as a front end it's just another option but um, it comes in three components mainly. You've got Mess Station, the interface, which is what you're seeing on the screen now. Um, separate to that, you've got Mess Station Config, and then the third part is the scraper, effectively, that, that works with Mess Station. And the scraper is pretty good. It's, it's faster, I'd say, than the built-in one that you find in Emulation Station, but it's not as quick as using a self-scraper that's really popular on um, a lot of RetroPie builds. So, um, with those components, Mess Station itself doesn't need X or a graphical kind of um, menu system to run. It just runs um, without that, doesn't need it. But currently, Mess Station Config, to configure anything, um, does need that interface. And the developer said in maybe a couple of months, he'll design it so that it doesn't need um, uh, X or a graphical interface to, to configure it. And instead, you can just do it um, without needing that extra install. So to get Mess Station Config to work, I had to install X and do a bit of other tweaking. And I probably didn't do it particularly well, but I did get it to work. And the mouse operates with it fine. But then sometimes using that interface, if you made an error or wanted to cancel something, sometimes the window wouldn't draw quite properly. So it's a bit difficult to navigate around. But, you know, fundamentally, it does work. And it saves most of the configuration and settings in a type of database file. So it's a bit different to Emulation Station and a track mode in that respect that quite most of the config for those two systems are in just raw text files that um, you can just dive in and edit, whereas this is a bit more structured in a, in a database format. Um, it also quite happily took my controller, um, which is an iBuffalo USB connected um, sort of SNES lookalike controller, and it took the inputs. But I am finding in this interface here, it kind of reacts oddly to some of the button presses. So it's a bit hit and miss to get it to work. Um, but yeah, I've I've had a stab at this and I can see it's got great potential. And you can test it out perhaps more easily in the Windows environment. Um, it works a lot more, um, well, it's quite stable there. But uh, I'll try and use it now and see how it goes. So it booted into this and I've probably put a bit more effort configuring the SNES and I have the Mega Drive. So if I try and scroll down, ooh, and that's not me being weird, it's just doesn't like the input. If I go, okay, so I, that, I accidentally ran the most recent game there, which works fine. And it's using run command. Um, so it's not running, mess station itself isn't running under X. It's just um, running as it sort of normally would. So you can see it opens a game without any issue at all and it also um yeah thinking about it ah no i'm just trying to think how it's getting my hotkeys because the hotkeys are working and i certainly didn't configure them in this oh it's because run command so yeah because i'm running this in exactly the same way as i would any other retropy build my hotkeys were already defined when i ran emulation station the first time so it's just reading those files anyway so if i quit that um, and you can see the most recent game. Now, I'll try and scroll again. Ah, okay, not quite. Quit out of that again. But it also just goes to show, oh, and also you can see the mouse cursor in the top left there, even though the mouse isn't wanting to move that, so I'm not too sure why that's there. 
Um, also, I was going to say that um, it's it's because it's using the effectively sort of RetroPy generated configuration files. It's easier to easy to mix and match your front ends. You could run three or four different front ends at once, really, on top of RetroPy or on the side of RetroPy because um, it just links together and uses the same configs. You don't have to replicate very much at all. So it's an easy way to flip between it. And you'll see on the build I put for a track mode, it's an easy way to flip between emulation station and a track mode. And no doubt it'd be the same for, for this one. And the reason why I'm doing a couple of front end videos at the moment is because uh, you might have noticed there's not much, if any, development on emulation station front. And whilst that can be maybe a bit helpful in the short term because you know that that environment isn't going to change, nothing's going to break. After a while, it's really starting to show that it's missing some features that users want. So these videos are sort of a bit of a proof of concept to show, look, it's not um, too hard for you to go and update the setups and use different front ends if you want to. But um, certainly at the moment, it's good to use Emulation Station because you know how everything should work and it's really good for testing on that basis as well because uh, it's quite a stable platform even if it isn't being developed. But um, yeah, Emulation Station has got a lot of um, options and I'll try to show you some more. There is one configuration file actually for I think it might be for Station config that's a flat text file that you can edit as well to change the screen resolution and um, sound options. So there's a few different options there. And I'll put links to the Station website and you can check out what it can do um, because it can really present itself better on that um, website than I can in the video at the moment on the Pi. But if I, I'll try again to get to the SNES section. I, I will do it. Hang on. Because for the snares, I also did manage to scrape the data as well. And that's um, the scrape is built into the user interface in MedStation config, so you do it all there. There, there it is. Okay, so I scraped some data. Um, again, it kind of looks a bit like Emulation Station in that format, but um, I believe themes will be part of this. I don't think they are at the moment, but um, I imagine that uh, you can configure this how you'd want. But in a lot of ways, this layout is similar to Emulation Station in that you've got a um, the picture of the box, the name of the game, um, scrape description, and then you've got all the metadata like genre players, publisher, etc. So it's, um, it's a similar layout, but also you can get um, video snaps, so you can get theme to show um, a live video. In fact, I think if I manually put it here, it would automatically show it, but I just haven't tried that yet. So it's it's really flexible and currently, you know, it's quite a live project. The developers updating it quite regularly. Um, I, I'll try and scroll, but again, the control isn't ideal here. So you can see it jump about and if my controller did this properly, it wouldn't look quite as bad, but you get the idea. And then I can just start one. There we go, and it, then from that point, it's just under the standard sort of retro arch based um, emulation configuration. There we go, fishing. So I hope it was useful. At the moment, I wouldn't recommend that you try and run with Station on a RetroPie build, mainly because there's quite a lot of hoops to jump through, and maybe it's not um, the way it deals with controllers seems to need a bit of improvement, and the user interface. Um, as well as some instructions probably need a bit of tweaking but it's definitely one to keep an eye on and uh, yeah check it out hopefully the video is useful if you've got any questions please put them in the comments thanks